Alright folks, welcome back to the channel. Last week we went down to the very arse end of England for the Sea Angling Classic, and it was great fun. As folk have a small boat and launch off beaches in quiet rural Scotland, this was a wee bit of a mind blowing experience for us. So I've made a video to show folk who might fancy giving it a go a wee look into what it's like. Now this video isn't exactly jam packed with fish in action, we weren't that lucky. This is more just us offering our perspective for anyone who might be interested. So sit back and relax, because she's going to be along you. Okay. <laughs> I'm nervous now, there's a camera. <laughs> <laughs> just read the bloody list and let's keep no. going. <laughs> Auxiliary. Auxiliary's in. Jerry can. Jerry can. Electronics. Yeah. Bye dear! Bye sheep! Bye grouse! <laughs> we'll be back soon, don't worry! With the boat on the trailer, the journey was going to take anywhere between 7 to 8 hours. Longer if we hit traffic. It's been a bit of a scramble getting everything ready in time, as there's a lot of requirements for participating in the Sea Angling Classic. It's a big event in a busy place, so there's a lot more health and safety considerations, and as such, there's a lot more rules in your average competition, which is understandable. Entries to this competition are around £275 per person. Cheaper if you book earlier, but technically we didn't pay. We won one of our places at the Clash One and Taupe event. First, second and third got free entry, but if they didn't want it, it would go down the line. We were fourth, so thankfully we got a place. We paid for the other entry out of the winnings from the Clash event too, so like major, major props to that Taupe for biting my hook, because without him, we wouldn't be going this year. So that's us arrived at Port Solent. Um, Ross just away to go and find out where we're putting the boat and I'm guarding the truck. You didn't crack a window for me though, so probably a good thing because I haven't stopped sneezing since I got down here. Um, apparently I'm allergic to southerners. I presumed that, but this has just confirmed it for me. Um, but aye, yeah, we'll find out where we're putting the boat and then find our hotel and then find a bait shop because we don't have much of that. I guess this is quite novel for you. What? Being the smallest one there. <laughs> this one looks lost. <laughs> it's just dwarf. It's okay, size isn't everything, Rodney. <laughs> you don't want to have a smaller one. <laughs> Once we got the boat parked, we headed along to the Botanica to get registered. Bait in the hotel could wait. We wanted to see what was going on. Uh, which number on the list are you? Uh, 27. You've got the, your app downloaded, don't you? No, what an app is it? It's a, it's a weird app. Uh, Scores Jungle app. Yeah, I did, and there was something weird about it. All right, so you need to go and get help with that then. The fun number. Fun number. <laughs> yeah. So, just make sure information is visible and must match the fun number with the fish measuring board in picture one. So... I'll explain all this in this. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Fish unique number. Yeah, there you go. Fun. <laughs> um, where did the fish, the drink tokens go? There you go. <laughs> Once we got ourselves registered, we met up with some of the guys from the fishing competitions back home. One of the requirements for the boat checks tomorrow was that all life jackets needed to have a light, and our spare one didn't. But the guys from Bluefin were nice enough to give us some glow sticks to attach to it. After that, we headed back round to the marina for dinner and lured in by a sign saying steak, kind of accidentally ended up in probably the fanciest restaurant there. Which was alright, because it was Rod's turn to pay. Chefing me, man. No. You go first. I'll definitely go first. Ladies, ladies. bother me. Oh, I. The food was amazing, but it was definitely above my socio-economic standing. I ordered a porn star martini and it came while we shot of something and I had no clue what to do with it. 
Was it supposed to go in the drink? Was it supposed to be sipped? What even was it? I ended up tanking it and pulling a face because it was champagne. And champagne is manky. Before going off to find our hotel, we had a few more drinks and socialised for a bit. I took way, way too much film of the mullet in the marina, but it was cool to see them. It's not a species I've ever had much to do with, so it was nice to spend the time watching them. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rod thinks he's bought frozen peeler crab and failed to notice the bucket of live crabs that the guy was taking them out of. Failed to notice that the guy was poking air bubbles, uh, air holes, in the back <laughs> for the crabs and can't seem to hear them scuttling around the back Use seat the of his very expensive right pickup. Right to turn right That's onto Southampton right. Road, A27. Well, it's so a crab hunt there, wasn't it? We're literally all alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, really? Like, did you not see them like walking around in the massive crate, or see him poke f***ing holes in the bag? Like, <laughs> I totally didn't. He was doing it straight in front of you, Rod. Oh, I wasn't doing it. I thought he was doing the rough. I was expecting. Good job they didn't run off. Aye. Uh -huh. They ran off the counter, and he literally caught them while you were talking to them. <laughs> I'm glad those guys made it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd have been gutted if that was me, like. Yeah, yeah, that would suck. I wonder if you put the new engine on or not. Oh well. I'm sure they'll, well, I'm sure they're probably in that shop, so we'll probably catch up with them in a minute. Can you imagine, like, I mean, like, it was bad enough when my GPS went. Yeah. Oh, it sucked. Imagine you brought your engine. If I brought my engine, I'd just, I'd have been gutted. Like. Yeah. But hey, they're here. That's good. We needed some rope to moor our boat on the pontoon and the competition wristbands got us 10% off at the marine superstore, so we went there. We got our boat check done shortly after that. Now I'm just remembering this list off the top of my head, so I'll probably miss some things out, but all competing boats needed to have an in-date fire extinguisher, in-date flares and a first aid kit. All skippers needed to have boat insurance and a valid VHF radio ticket and all crew members needed personal insurance and a life jacket with a light attached to it. Are you having performance issues, Rod? My god, it's warm in these. Oh wow, <laughs> that's a shame for someone. Yeah, what a shame. I think it's a pen. No, maybe not. If you're in Portsmouth and you've lost the tip of your rod, it's like here, this wee slip. But like, that's probably a long shot. It might have been from bloody France. But yeah, if you lost a rod, but there's one there. I've got five minutes to go beach calling. And Rodney cannot stop me. Let's see if we can find something big and dead. It is unnaturally hot and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't struggling. But this morning we got our boat check done. We met up with the guys from Doggy Driver for a bit and yeah, got our moon and rope. What else did we do? Had breakfast. Um, so yeah, now we're off to go and catch some mackerel and hopefully we can find some. As you can see, we've had a bit of a costume change since this morning. We decided we didn't want to get our good fishing clothes dirty, which sounds ridiculous because they will get dirty within the first hour of tomorrow. But um, yeah, keep them nice for the competition and free from macro glitter. It's a little bit of a daunting 
process going through such a big harbour when you're used to launching on quiet beaches in Scotland, but the um, harbour's quite well marked out with the red and uh, green buoy pillar type things that you have to go through for the channel. I uh, will have to go down here and then come out of Portsmouth Harbour uh, to some fishing marks that we've been given for mackerel. The speed limit in the harbour is 10 knots, so you don't get anywhere overly quickly. Um, it's kind of a daunting thing, but I've had quite a good chat with the folks in the marina uh, reception and they've told me all the places to go, so hopefully I should be okay and not make any major mistakes. As long as there's no massive ships trying to run me over, hopefully. Uh, Huh? I think so! <laughs> <laughs> uh, at least I didn't hit the submarine and stuff. Yeah. Is this where you want to try for macro? The mackerel were few and far between, but we got a wee handful which would do us fine for the next day. We then needed to fuel up and decided to do so in the marina, which meant going through the lock. They've got petrol stations for boats down here, which we thought was pretty cool, until we saw the price per litre. Southwest, and you will have wind against tide, so it won't be very pleasant. Please make allowances for that in your planning. If you're heading east, which most people do, you've got to get back. If you want comfort, you can sit in the lee of the Isle of Wight, cold or princess areas for those that know it, and fishing comfort. Sunday is fairly steady, moderate winds from the west. Again, if you're not happy going east, the Isle of Wight's the place to be down that, down that east, uh, down east the side of it. Um, the options are tomorrow afternoon, if it blows up too bad, we might call it early. Hi everybody, I'm Georgie. So, um, the ways that you can help us while you're out there on the water, uh, Obviously, getting those measurements is crucial for you guys. The longer the fish, the more centimetres you'll get and the higher chance you'll get of winning, and that is what you guys are here for. Obviously, from our perspective, it gives us a better um, view of actually how long these fish are. So if you, when you're taking the photos, can try and keep your fish as straight as possible. We've been out with a few fishermen. Thank you to everyone who has supported us with that. We know how strong some of these fish are, especially the sharks. But if you can try and keep them as straight as possible, that would be great. Like I say, we're um, looking at the lengths, but we're also uh, working towards getting an AI system as well that will automatically, in the future, be able to estimate very accurately the length of these fish, but without these photos we can't do that. So 
keep them as straight as possible. And we're collecting all the photos from the Sea Blue Classic, but if anyone is taking photos outside of the competition on a measuring board and you wouldn't mind sending those over to us, that would be really useful for our artificial intelligence board to just get as many pictures as possible. And again, with the tagged fish as well, if you do happen to catch a tagged fish outside of the competition, if you wouldn't mind reporting that, that would be really useful for us. After the skipper's meeting, we collected our measure, the flags and the GoPro and headed down to set up the boat for the morning. Now, I don't know how well you heard the ladies there. It was hard to hear in that pub. But the Sea Anglin Classic works with a project called CAST, which I think is pretty cool. Now, CAST stands for Competitive Angling as a Scientific Tool. The project is based out of Portsmouth University and they're looking at bass, bream, tope, smoothhound, skates and rays and they're gathering information about fish stocks, distribution of these species within the Solent, and their life cycles. Every boat was to be fitted with a GPS and a GoPro to record the deck throughout both days of the competition. I'll put more information and the links to the CAS project socials in the description of this video if you're interested. Probably could do without this one, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, I can go back. All right. Yeah, given the size of your boat, you're one of those that I will be relying on to call me up and tell me if you think it's getting too bad. This isn't even one of the smallest. This is a this is a 17 and a half. There's 16s and stuff, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There is. I mean, we, my plan is to go to Boulder Bank straight off, fish for bream. Yeah, so we're going to have this. Yeah, that's a good plan. We're probably going to have this after lunch. Yeah. Because you can have the tides going to sweep and go wind against tide. Yeah, yeah. The wind's picking up. Yeah. I went for a wander in the evening to tire myself out a bit and catch a south coast sunset. Now I don't really like cities, but Portsmouth wasn't that bad. The spiky thing was a bit weird and I felt like I'd discovered the nest of the laffies. But it's a friendly enough place and the sea air was nice. I was excited for the competition in the morning. There's a lot of species down here that I've never caught before. Bream, garfish, blonde rays, undulate, small-eyed, spotted. I really wanted to catch at least one of the ray species. Sufficiently walked, it was time to head to bed for an early start in the morning. On the first day of the competition, we headed out early to try and get just a wee bit more mackerel. A lot of the other boats had the same idea. We didn't have to be at the starting line until 8. Now the starting line itself was out near the big sea forts, and there were different areas for the different sizes of boats. An email was sent out to all competitors shortly before the start time to tell us what colour of sticker would go on our wee card, and what colour of fun numbers we would be using that day. We'd been issued with 100 numbers on four different pieces of coloured paper, and four correlating stickers. Today's colour was pink. When you got to the start line, before you could start, you needed to take a selfie with all anglers on the boat holding the card with the right colour of sticker on it, with another competitor's boat clearly visible in the background. As I think I said earlier, the Sea Angling Classic isn't like your average fishing competition, and there's a lot more steps to consider. The weather was good for now, but it was due to kick up in the afternoon, so the plan was to fish hard and fish quick. To do that, didn't you? So, first fish of the day? <laughs> first fish of the day, in the Oh, here is a smoothie. Yeah. We got a smoothie. Got it. Nice one, Rodney. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge measure. I thought it was two different measures. What have you got here? Oh, nice. Two, one. Oh, wait, no. Oh. It goes down the way, not along the way. Two, six, oh, two. Two, six. 
two six or two, definitely. Yeah. Um. Awesome. Yep, took them back. Not long after we dropped anchor, Rod caught two smooth hounds, one straight after the other. A cracking start to the competition. Or so we thought. We couldn't get either of them to upload to the app, nor could we get them to save as drafts. I then caught a bream, and after releasing it, we realised we'd photographed it on the wrong side, and thought that it wouldn't be counted, but turns out that rule was actually just for the bass. All fish submitted had to be submitted through the app, and we weren't the only ones having difficulties with it. As long as you've got it on your phone, over. Uh, understood, we'll just take pictures on the phone and try and upload it later if that's alright. Thanks no, for that. No, you have to oh, no, no. Up. We've oh. had three fish and not a single one to count. Yeah. <laughs> like. Marshall, uh, this is Thresher. Uh, we're having exactly the same issue with the app, only it's not allowing us to take pictures of the fish. Yeah. Uh, to save it as a draft or download it. So I've took a screenshot of the pictures itself on the app, not allowing us to do it. And I've emailed them to the classic number. So hopefully that, that'll do it. Marshall Boat from Grumpy Mick. We're also having that same issue. Over. Um. <coughs> Marshall Boat 1, Marshall Boat 2. So, two smooth hounds on the boat. First drop, woo! Awesome start. Then Charlie got the bream. So we measured that. Lay it on its wrong side, and it won't upload in the app. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> at least we caught some fish. Oh, well, at least we caught some fish. <laughs> at least we We'd have been bloody in the lead. We're only blank on paper. We've been in the bloody lead now. Here you go, bite. Oh, nice. Right, just hold on to it for a second. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it could be quite a decent breed, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Believing our smooth hounds would be disqualified, and under the impression that the fun numbers had to be in consecutive order, we started again and used 2603 and 2604 on the next two fish. And this was really stupid and it cost us 61 centimetres of fish. We got to keep our smoothies, but two of our bream were disqualified because they had the same numbers. I think the Sea Angling Classic would really benefit from having a presentation at the skipper's meeting on how to use the app and a full rundown of the rules. A lot of folk had bother with this, it wasn't just us. No. Well, whatever I've got, I've got it, and it could be a drop. Go for it. We then moved on to another mark, got absolutely plagued by doggies, so we moved on again. Rod got bitten off by a tope, but he caught another smooth hound, and I caught my very first ever conger eel. They're so cool. Glad we're out of them waves, that was awful. <laughs> Warriors oh. are pretty wet boats, aren't they? <laughs> no, not Warriors, this 175, just... Just this 175. It's grumpy mate. Just this it's one. It's a brick. This one, it was grumpy in them waves. Them waves were the height of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, pretty much to recap the day. 
<laughs> well, at least we could laugh about it. Here, uh, I saw dolphins. I caught a conger eel, and like, I caught a bream. So I'm, I'm made. I'm happy. Yeah. Well, we caught bass this morning as well, didn't we? So yeah. So we, we caught bass this morning fishing for mackerel. That was cool. Um, we. Um, caught two smooth hounds straight away, one was over a metre, one was just under a metre. Then we both caught bream, which was both of our first bream that we've ever caught, that was cool. Measured them, made a mess of it, the alf wasn't working, still need to find out what we're doing about that. Then we, what did we do, we tried another smooth hound mark, it just gave us doggies, Then so then we moved to a tote mark, and then I had a real good run that was probably a tote, and it bit me off because I had a nylon um, snoot on the hook, which in hindsight was probably silly, but anyway. And then I caught a smooth hound almost at the same time. So we got that smooth hound in and measured it. And then, did we get, yeah, you, you caught some congers, didn't you? You caught yeah. two congers, that was your first congers, that was cool. And then the wind blew up, the waves blew up, the tide came on, it ripped our anchor out of the ground, popped the wire ties off it. So we started actually dragging the anchor along backwards and suddenly all the lines were in front of us instead of behind us so knew there was something up so we got all that out of the water and then fought our way back into shelter through the eight foot tall waves that seemed to be there. Got absolutely soaked to the point I can feel it dripping off my toes. <laughs> say something and now, and now they've decided that we're going to finish early at two o'clock because the weather's staying. And uh, we're sat beside the two forts in the mouth of the Solent, waiting for two o'clock. We've got baits in the water still, but it's anchors up at two o'clock, calling it a day at that early apparently. So yeah, that's pretty much our day so far. But we reckon we probably caught around about four meters of fish with the two species that we've caught. We haven't caught any rays, which is annoying, and we haven't caught any tope or bass. So, I don't know, we'll see what's said when we get back about all this app stuff. So I don't know if you can tell, but I've got a wee touch of the sunburn. Uh, I did put sunscreen on, but apparently no enough. To be fair, it's not that bad. It's mostly just like salt sting. Uh, Cause warriors are offy wet boats and we got a lot of water straight to the pus coming back in from the I want to say boulder banks, but it wasn't boulder banks. I don't know where we were, but we were out and we came back in and it was uh, an offy, offy wet journey. Rog's just away trying to see if we can get our fish weighed in. We had a lot of problems with the app, so hopefully they're still accepted. I mean, we've got timestamp photos and they're all correct, except from one bream that we uh, laid on the wrong side. To be fair, I didn't do that. It was Rod, but still. Um, yeah, we caught three or four bream. I can't remember. It was a long time ago now. Um, and uh, three smoothies. And we also caught a bull husk, some doggies. I caught two congers, my first conger, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, did we catch anything else? Rod got bitten off by a tope. We didn't get it to the boat, so that uh, kind of sucked. But yeah, um, it's been a good day's fishing. Got to see dolphins and see a different part of the country. Oh, he's on the phone. Here comes Rod find out if we've actually got our fish accepted or not. The wrong side on the bream isn't a thing. It can be either side on the bream. Oh, right. But because we'd given them the same number, so uh, for, for yeah, future yeah. reference, if you take a photo of a fish, it needs to have a separate number. Yeah. So even if you think you've messed it up. So we've got our smoothies and that's it. So we lost 27 centimeter and 34 centimeter. Mm. So we lost. We're dead 50, kids. 61 centimetres we lost. So we should have just given them it, any We've number. just given them a new number. The audio on this clip's a bit damaged. We had a bit of a dodgy wire issue going on. But basically, don't double number your fish, even if you think you've messed up. Um, take a screenshot, it'll be time stamped. And if the photo's right and everything's correct, they'll probably accept it. Wish we'd known that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think we did too badly today, considering we've never fished down here before and it was a wee bit choppy. A bit gutted I didn't catch a ray, but hey, there's tomorrow.
So, what was Just look, I was looking on Facebook and the, the results three hours ago yeah. says that Bluefin, the other Scottish guys, were in first position with 1,051 points. Yes! And they'd overtaken Blackbridge, who were at 963. Day two of the competition, spirits were questionable. She was going to be a windy in again in the day, and our only goal was to do better than we did yesterday. Now I'm going to apologise in advance for the wind noise throughout the clips taken today, as she was a wee bit rough, and it wasn't exactly smooth sailing. So Blackbridge is in first place, and that was that catamaran. Uh, Bluefin is in second place, and I hope they win, because I don't care who wins, but if they were Scottish, I'd be awfully happy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I hope they do well. And then we are all the way... Oh wait, missed us. Down there, in 21st. With 308, which is very fitting for us, I think. But, <laughs> hi. Good morning from the Solent. We're currently navigating our way out of Portsmouth Harbour. We're languishing in 21st position today, so we better pull our socks up really high this time. some fish guts. <laughs> Bobbed around like a cork for about an hour and a half at our first mark and caught an out but a brace of congers. If we'd known it was going to be this rough, we probably would have just stayed in the more sheltered bit. But we saw something out there that made the discomfort worthwhile an ocean sunfish. 
It's a rare thing to see in this part of the world, so I'm feeling beyond grateful that the tide brought it by us. It was getting rougher and so we decided to retreat. I couldn't pull the anchor up manually. Every time I got a few metres on it, the swell would rip the rope right back out my hand. So we had to do the sketchy arse to back cleat manoeuvre. I'm sure that manoeuvre actually has a real name, but I think mine's much more apt. An electric windlass sure would be nice. It took us the best part of an hour to get back in and we got soaked again. We spent the rest of the day fishing in the shelter of the Isle of Wight and listening to the radio. One of the other boats, Crusader 1, had gotten their anchor stuck out in the rough and we were hoping to hear that they'd managed to free themselves. In the end, they had to leave their anchor behind, attached to a fender, to be retrieved at a later date when conditions were calmer. We were glad the situation was sorted out safely, but gutted for the ladies on Crusader. It cost them a fair bit of time. The tides in the Solent are no joke. You need a lot of lead to hold the bottom, and if we come back next year, we'll certainly be bringing a bigger anchor. This, no, this road, this road, this road, this road, this road. Just, uh, look, 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 look. Oh, yeah, We caught four smoothies and two bream here, but then we noticed our lines were trailing behind us. The anchor was being dragged across the bottom by the tide again. So we lifted up and drifted for bass in the last hour of the competition. It was due to finish at 2pm again today.
Back at the pontoon, we demanked the boat and then nipped back to the hotel for a shower before dinner. Tonight would be an early one because we were knackered. We'd get the boat on the trailer in the morning before the prize given, but right now, all that was on our minds was a hot shower, a good meal and a drink or several. As we near the end of the video, I just want to say sorry about the sound. The wire on the shotgun mic had been damaged and we didn't have a spare with us. It's not been too bad, but there's been some good clips too damaged to use. But the prize given filmed pretty well, so stick around until the end. Show us your Sea Angling Classic Cup. Sunday morning, preparations are well underway for the prize given. They're getting their flags up. We've had our Starbucks and our Yetis. Awesome, keeping it hot. It's been a cool weekend. Awesome that all the sponsors have sponsored the event. We've got Penn, Wiley X, Crew Saver, Extreme Boats, and Exposure Marine. I'm sure there's more that I'm forgetting. But um, I think we've had an awesome weekend. We'll definitely be back next year, potentially with a bigger boat. But talking of boats, we need to go and get Grumpy Mick onto the trailer ready to travel back north. Good morning, it's Sunday and we are currently trying to figure out how to get the boat out of the water. <laughs> uh, the slip that we went in on is quite weedy and we're a wee bit worried about getting the truck stuck on the way out. And um, yeah, the high tide isn't till 12. I think it's like 9 at the moment. And uh, there's a wee social gathering starting at 12, but we'll be a wee bit late to that because uh, we've got to get the boat out today. And yeah, then the prize given is at 2. And then there's a wee bit of a do afterwards, but unfortunately we can't go because we need to get up back up the road. Um, it's an eight hour drive and we've got a lot of work nonsense to get on with tomorrow, so yeah. But it's, it's been a good trip. Um, Portsmouth is a weird place, like, <laughs> it's not the worst city I've been to. Um, it's quite nice actually, but it, it's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Bye. Rod's away asking if we can use slips, so when he gets back, we'll... There he goes. That is a stack and a half of your coolers. Uh, we're doing the awards around about 2 o'clock this afternoon. A little bit of entertainment coming up for you shortly. But if you're out and about at Port Solent this afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome to Port Solent Marina. Appreciate your company. If you're out and about in one of the restaurants, relaxing, taking it easy on this Sunday afternoon. Per perfect weather. Just get some burger. Cut the beans. Absolutely superb. Takes some Gonna have to make a little room so we can get the trophy in the band. 
Wahnsinn. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and uh, distinguished guests. Yes, and uh, and certainly my number one fan over there. Um, it's really a pleasure to be standing here today, celebrating what is an incredible event. Uh, a whole 365 days of work have gone into this, and uh, and a few years in the in the previous planning. Uh, when you come up with an idea, that's one thing. Uh, you, you meet lots of people that talk about things, but uh, it's, it's all well and good talking about them, but you need to actually make them happen. Now, when I had the idea of the Siangani Classic going, going back just over three and a bit years ago, I wanted to create something that was to be celebrated for people that, uh, not just from the angling fraternity, but to look after the next generation, for children to, to make sure the environment's looked after, to make sure that, that, that there is a, a, uh, an environment and, uh, and the fish species that we, we, we love to go out and catch are there for the next generation. That is why we work so hard with, uh, with, with the shoreline cleanups, the, the, the children's crabbing competition, the scientific study that's being done by, by Portsmouth University, uh, the marine, de uh, the marine department there. And, and of course, it's great that all of our event partners have the same ethos as we have. It is so important to, to, to respect those things. Um, I, I know that uh, there are so many people to thank uh, for, for making this event so special. And um, it, it, it really is, it's not an I thing. It will never be an I thing, it's a we thing. We as a team are doing this. We as Angling Spirit, we as you the competitors, we as you the media team, the admin team, the marshal team, and everybody else involved in that. Best place junior, because that's the next generation. So let's start off with them. Uh, we're then gonna follow that up by the best place lady in the competition, and then, uh, then, then follow that up by the best place boat, uh, 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 best place small boat in the competition uh, and then get on to the longest of each of the five species and then 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 we present the trophy the the, uh, the trophies to them and then when second place is up here and all the other people are up here they can actually choose which of the prizes they want which categories pretty cool and then we present the main prize they caught a total length of 400 and 21. Absolutely super. What an overall length. 421 total length. They are on the boat called Blue Shift. Could Harry Simmons come forward? Where's Harry? But, uh, this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the future of sea angling and fishing. Fantastic. And then we have the winner. This year's Best Lady Placed Angler in the Sea Angler Classic 2024, Gemma Robbins, Crusader 1. 648 centimetres. Um, this isn't the best lady awards. This should be best ladies because without all the girls, I wouldn't have done this. So this isn't just my award. This is for all of the Crusader ladies. Fantastic, I agree. So very quickly, how long have you been fishing? I entered the Sea Angling Classic last year, and before that, I'd only ever fished three times. And I entered that last year, and I won the Best Lady last year with the help of my mentor, Kaz, from Squidward 3. So to come back this year and be a mentor to three other ladies has been absolutely incredible. Fantastic, ladies, you round of applause, please. Amazing. And in first place, we have Bhutan Cancer. Yeah. And we have Lee Scattergood, Peter Farrell, Liam McCarty and Andrew Mears to come forward. Fantastic, come forward. Right, so the last three teams in no particular order, what we'd like to do is, is to get the last three teams actually in front of us here. 
standing in front of these boats. So, could we have, um, where should we go? But you decide what, what, I'll tell you what, I'll, these are in no particular order. Can we please ask the following teams to come and join us just down in front of the amazing extreme 646 Game King? Can we please ask? See which two. Blue Finn. And boot out breast cancer. Well done, guys. One of you followed by an abs. You're going to need the boats. You're going to need the boat to get all the prizes home that you're going to get from behind us as well. Okay. So, Ross, let's do third place at the Angling Classic 2024. Well, okay. Well, let's say that on day one, they did really well actually, had with 508 centimeters. On day two, they had 637 centimeters with an overall length of 1,145 centimeters. In third place, could we have boot out breast cancer? <laughs> in the Sea Angling Classic 2024. Well done, guys. Third place, 2024. Back for 2025, yes? We'll be back for every year this is running. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so that leaves two teams. See, we blue fin. Very close. Second place, total length loss. They had, it finished with the zero. The second digit was a five. The third digit was a one. And the fourth digit was a one. In what particular order? The second one has got five in it. A zero, a two, and a one. <laughs> very, very little in it. So, in second place. How are you feeling, guys, at the moment? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. oh, that's it, the boat's unlocked. There we go, that's fine. Right, well, let's put you out of your misery. Mark? Do you want to actually announce who's come second? Oh, sorry, just make sure I get this one right. <laughs> uh, second place, huge congratulations. See which two. <laughs> Robert Shedford, Gareth, Gareth Petro, and Craig Ayres. Total overall score of 1,150. Well done, guys. Fantastic. Keep the applause going, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Second place. So near, but so far. Oh, never mind. Next year, we'll uh, try a bit harder. Have you had a great weekend? Fantastic. Yeah. Amazing week. So, put your names down now for 2025? Most definitely. Yeah. 70th birthday next year, so we'll celebrate down here. Rob's 70th birthday next year, the party's on Rob, okay? You'll get the first round in, Rob. Ladies and gentlemen, see which two... Well... Right. Yeah. Oh, well chuffed. Yeah, well chuffed. Oh, I'm glad Scottish football won it. Sorry, I'm going to have to overtake you all the way up the motorway with two boats. I'm going to have to do it. Find a wife. You better get the land rover down here. Right, so they're choosing. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the winners of Sea Angry Classic 2020. The great competitors, but we've now got our winning team. Started with the uh, amazing trophy presentation. There's a great history behind this trophy. We'll go into it all now, but it is absolutely superb. Ross, to give you a very quick, brief rundown on the trophy, Ross. Yeah, it is heavy, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been made by BA and, and uh, the, the guys at Hyde. Uh, it's been made out of a big, uh, the, uh, the HMS Victory, uh, the HMS Prince of Wales and HMS Middleton by the apprentices. Uh, truly a work of art, as, as you can see. And it gives us great pleasure this year to present it to you. Our 2024 champions is here at home. Come on, make some noise for these guys. Come on, come on, well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 Sea Angling Classic Champions. Fantastic, well done, guys. So, I think it's it's traditionary that, uh, that, that the champions say a few words. Well, Ross, what can we say? Brilliant, fantastic. You know, uh, we came here last year, as you know, and we came 14th in a small boat. We brought a bigger boat this year, and Stephen joined us, and we've won it. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I mean, I think, uh, first of all, to you, Ross, it's an amazing competition you put on here. The stewards have already been thanked. Uh, we'd also like to thank the back office team, Veronica and, and everybody else. You know, lots of work put on. We also want to thank the sponsors as well, because Willie and I have fished in internationals in the past, uh, both ex world champions. I've never done anything like this before I went a prize like this. So it's absolutely fabulous. And the, the fact that the sponsors are supporting it, we really do. And I guess we're speaking for the whole angling community here. We really do appreciate that. And it wouldn't be a competition without other competitors. And all we could say genuinely, because we've come from true in the west coast of Scotland, we just I'd just like to thank all the other competitors for the camaraderie, for the help they've given us. And there's one or two other people here that have helped us and shown us where to fish some of the marks. So thank you, Darren Phillips over here, who used to fish against the Gavin team in particular. Thank you, Darren, that has helped us mate. So, so well, well done, did you just come along here? I don't know if there's much I can add to that, but no, seriously, great competition. Meeting out all the rest of the teams and stuff, it's been great. No, no hassles, and all this bad boy here is super, thanks. Anybody, I've thoroughly enjoyed the last couple of days, the great fishing was sure the lot, so I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Well, without further ado, let's take you to your prize. We have some keys here that we're going to hand over. This is your boat. You've just won that. Mark, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, if, 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 if you lead on uh, with, with the trophy, we will give you your champions trophy with you. We'll, um, we'll, we'll give you your champions jackets. Just whilst we're walking through there, I would really like to thank all of the, the admin team and everybody for being involved in the event. And uh, for, for Marianne, for Sophie, Vicky, and uh, everybody else. So thank you ever so much. I'm so chuffed away, I'm so chuffed away. Well done. This is, this, is the, this is the champion's walk. This is, they're going to get up on the boat. 
We're going to give them the champion shirts. They've got special crew saver. You can't actually buy the you wear. You, uh, you, you, you get the... Uh, they've been specially made, a bit like the, uh, the green jacket in golf. Uh, these are the actual crew saver life jackets with the golden Siangling Classic Champions logo on it. As Mark actually presents the shirts, now that you can present the shirts to the guys, Mark. Fortunately, we've got a selection of sizes. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 Behind you, that's it. Look, there's only there's only four. There's, you're the only people entitled to wear those those, those caps ever. We, we have a larger one as well, one of those shirts, but that fits you very snugly at the moment. That's okay. That's a tight fit. Let's get this one ready because this is the one that's going to count. I'm going to hand over the keys. You can then lift up the trophy. And the engine. And, and the engine. There we go. Right on, boys. Yeah. There you go. So, Rodney, what are your final thoughts on the weekend? We're on the way home. We're half up the motorway early. It's quite a long drive from Scotland, I have to say, but I think it was worth it. I, uh, I've enjoyed my weekend. I think Charlie you did too, really. My thoughts really are that I want to go and do it again next year, but I hope that the weather's better. I think that having a small boat against all of those big boats, we were at quite a disadvantage in the, in the sea conditions, let's say. I don't know what the sea conditions there are like on a good day, <laughs> but that wasn't a good day for our boat. Um, <coughs> It's four rods per boat, so there's no advantage or disadvantage. Four people might be quicker on four rods, I suppose, but... Um, there was a husband and wife team came tenth or ninth or something or other, so, you know, it's doable in a small boat. I, th I think we're, we, speed-wise, I mean, I've only got a 90 on there, I could have 140 on there. Speed-wise, we could keep up with the other boats. We left most of the other small boats standing. One of them actually said to me, he said, you know, your boat's flying. Um, we, we, they came lost sight of us, really. Um, I, uh, I just wasn't particularly confident in that sea, but that's, um, that's a whole other issue. I um, think if... The biggest, the biggest thing for me was the daunting aspect of going somewhere so busy with so many big boats and so many yachts and in a marina and all of these things. When you when you're in Scotland and you're launching from a beach, it's all easy. There's nobody else there. There's no doing this, doing that on the radio. But actually now that I'm on the way home, it wasn't as big of a deal as I thought it was gonna be. Portsmouth Harbour, did they say forty percent of all of the UK's recreational boating or something or other? Or all of the forty percent of all of the UK's boat movements are in Portsmouth Harbour. It's a open busy place. Uh, actually, the first time I went out, I was bloody nervous about where I was going and the boogies and all the other things that went through your head, but you know, it was fairly easy in hindsight. Uh, I would go there tomorrow and crack on, it wouldn't worry me. We'll be back next year, that's for sure. Alrighty folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. A huge congratulations to Bluefin and everyone else who placed. So to conclude, if you're thinking about trying out the Sea Angling Classic, then do. Give it a go. It's an experience and a half, and it's good crack. And a whole arse boat as first prize is pretty insane. Just make sure you know how to use the app before you set out. And if you've got a small boat like ours, best of luck to you if the weather turns bad. But aye, it is worth the trip, and we will more than likely be going back next year for the 2025 Sea Angling Classic.